second, is there a difference in occlusion between full and half arch scan? Yes. Here are some reasons why errors might occur when scanning. It tends to reason that the longer the scan span, the longer the error. Therefore, a full arch scan is more likely to have data deformation than a half arch scan. For this reason, half arch scans have been recommended for single unit restorations. Let's look at the next article together. Purpose of this study is to assess the accuracy and producibility of a virtual intercruiser restoration procedure. This paper shows two things. First, where to scan when only one byte scan is available. The second is whether a full arch or half arch scan is advantageous. Group 1 to 3 are full arch scans aligned by anterior left and right intercruiser scans. Group 4, 5, 6 are half arch scans and sorted by anterior, posterior, and quadrant intercruiser scans. The best result was group 5, half arch scan with posterior intercruiser scan. The results of this paper are as follows. There is difference in occlusal contact obtained from inter-occlusal scans in different segments of dental arches, more obvious in full arch scans. Multiple virtual inter-occlusal records may be needed for full arch scans to reduce tilting effect. Half arch scans provide the most accurate occlusal representation for a single unit cases. But this paper has the following limitations. First, a single interocruiser record. Con experiment on the model. So I did some more experimentation with the Medit Interoral Scanner. Our three step members scanned each other under the following conditions. A full arch scan and two interocruiser records were performed. The first group scanned the posterior buccal side only. The second group did the posterior buccal and occlusal surfaces. The third group did the quadrant buccal only. There is no difference between the three groups. This was a common and consistent observation across all three. We can conclude that aligning the full arch scan with two interocruiser records gives consistent results. The half arch scan used one interocruiser record. The interocruiser scan position is the same as before. Superimpositioning the full arch scan data on the half arch scan made it possible to compare the occlusal context of the contralateral occlusion caused by tilting. Unlike the full arch scan, the half arch scan shows different results depending on the byte acquisition area. However, looking at the scanned right half, it's hard to see much difference in the occlusal context. The occlusal alignment of half arch scan seemed to be the reason it was clinically acceptable despite the tilting. Let's watch a video comparing the fit of a crown made with full and half arch scan data. First, I fabricated a crown from the full arch scan and tried it on. I checked the fit to be excellent with no missing shim star. The second is a crown made from a half arch scan. At the first molar site, you can see that the shim stack is coming out slowly. This is the occlusal context of the two crowns. In the future, I will collect more clinical cases comparing full arch scan to half arch scans and share them as they become meaningful. The second key point, full arch scan with two interocruiser records give consistent results. When using a half arch scan, it is useful to make sure that the occlusal alignment matches the occlusal contact. We've done well with the half arch scan so far, so they are clinically useful, but full arch scans are likely to be even better.